Yes, today is his actual birthday. And I feel there could be no more fitting day than today to honor my father, father for the man he was and the life that he led. A birthday is a commemoration of the date someone is born into this world, with every year marking the day with family, friends, and likely a party. Today will be of no exception. What can be said of a man who was born January 20th, 1940, on a humble homestead in Roblin, Manitoba? A homestead that does not exist today, only a hill, a pasture, and a small lake remain. Now picture Manitoba winter, that homestead that does not exist, no electricity, and dirt for a floor. I cannot think of a more appropriate name than the one my grandparents gave my father, Adam. In Hebrew, Adam translates to son of red earth, grounded, steadfast. His parents, Mike and Tilly, who had been recently married, may have caused a bit of a stir or a scandal in Roblin, Manitoba that year, as Tilly's widowed mother and Mike's eldest brother were already a couple and on their way to being married. To quote Michael Crichton, life finds a way. Meant that my dad would be born on that humble homestead, entering into the world for the life he was meant to lead. I imagine that life for Mike and Tilly and little Adam was not easy. Besides any scandal, Mike was given difficult land to farm, being the youngest of many siblings. But life goes on. My dad started school a year early, entering the classroom at the tender age of four. Tilly's brother, Nick, was his classroom teacher in a one-room schoolhouse. Uncle Nick was a fine teacher and must have made quite an impact on my father as Uncle Nick was the first member of my father's family to receive a bachelor's degree, modeling the importance of higher education and maybe the vocation of teaching itself. By 1947, my grandfather had had enough of this farming life and decided to try his luck out west, working in primary resources, well, more specifically, lumber mills. A year later, in 1948, the family moved out to join him, including three-year-old Edward, born in 1945. The house they moved into on Pandora Street in East Vancouver was simple, but a large one, one with many rooms and places for family to stay. By 1953, Brother Robert was born, and the family was complete. My dad continued his education in East Van, graduating from Britannia Secondary in 1957, stating in his yearbook that he aspires to be the ambassador to the USSR someday. Interesting. He went on after high school to the University of British Columbia, receiving a bachelor's degree in education. He was going to be a teacher. Dad was hired immediately by the Burnaby School District, starting at Moss Grob Junior Secondary in 1962, at the age of 22. He went on to teach for 36 years, and they honored him by naming the grass field after him in his name. But let's go back to 1962, Kennedy Cuban Missile Crisis. And that was the year that, while attending a church picnic, a young woman caught my father's eye. Maybe it was her exotic look, having been born in Ukraine, that piqued his interest, like some James Bond femme fatale in the movie of that era, or that she stood with her female university friends and sang Ukrainian folk songs on stage in beautiful harmony and costume. Just her name alone, Anna Kvitoslava Hanashevska, <laughs> intriguing. <clears throat> Having fled post-war Europe as refugees, 
with her parents and two baby sisters. How familiar. My mom came to Canada to start a new life. <laughs> and her father, a Catholic priest. My dad was smitten. After a pleasant courtship, my parents were engaged and set their date to be married on July 2nd, 1966, at the old St. Mary's Church on Princess Avenue in East Vancouver. The wedding reception was here at the Ukrainian Catholic Center, where our party will be today. Mom taught elementary school in North Vancouver, and Dad taught social studies in Burnaby. They did decide to compromise, and they decided to cross the bridge and buy their first home in 1969 in the new suburb of Blue Ridge, North Vancouver. All that was missing was the 1970s to usher in three little boys, three years in a row. Now back to teaching. I don't know if you've heard the stories. I've heard the antics. When my father proudly told me that he had a catchphrase that he would say to his fellow teachers to get him pumped up for the day of teaching. It's showtime! At that point, I knew he was no regular teacher. Although not appropriate any longer, my father in the classroom would, um, <clears throat> was very good at imitating accents of foreign leaders to make the history come alive and really engage the students. I imagine he did a respectable Churchill, a decent Joseph Stalin, but I cannot condone any angry shouting in a German accent. Students and colleagues spoke of my father's passion for his subject, his knowledge of the material, and the care he gave his students, wishing them every success along their way. One particular student on my father's debating team was Don Matrick. My dad had a special connection with Don and encouraged him to pursue his passions and to go out and make the world his own. Don went on in the 1980s to create video games, and in time became the world president of Electronic Arts, one of the world's largest video games companies, and later worked with Microsoft in their gaming division. My father knew nothing about computers or technology. He just knew how to inspire others. Besides leading debating teams, my father coached senior boys rugby for decades. <clears throat> Players under his careful eye developed their potential, not only as school players, but eventually as club players for the Burnaby Eagles, some of whom went on to play for Canada's national team. They all respected Captain K with the introduction to the sport that he provided them and the life lessons he imparted along the way. I never knew the names of his principals. I never heard a complaint about a colleague or having to write report cards. My father is the pinnacle servant leader, working tirelessly to elevate those around him to reach their potential. Humble dedication to others. My father was a practical man and a simple man. He was a true hometown sports fan, whether the BC Lions or the Canucks. I remember listening to games on the radio with him and my brothers as uh, we were always driving somewhere with our busy family life. For as long as I can remember, and I can remember standing in these domes when there was scaffolding, way back when, my parents were actively involved in parish and Ukrainian community life in our city. In the 1970s, some of my earliest boyhood memories involved crushes on many of mom's Voloshki singers. <laughs> Some are here today. <laughs> Although mom did not continue to work when she had the three of us, dad tirelessly supported the family and supported my mom to pursue, to pursue her musical passions and projects. Artists need support. And that's what my father gave. My mother's projects became family projects. We were all in it together, whether we liked it or not. 
So if anybody here was touched by the work my mother generated for over 50 years, my dad was the man behind the woman, behind the music. If you were to ask me what my father's interests were, or what pursuits that he led in his personal time, or any time that he had, the answer would be people. My father wanted to take care of everyone around him, offering a ride, a kind word, to lead a committee, or to roll up his sleeves and take on work that others may not have wanted to do. My father never sought prestige, rank, title, or fame. He would rather have enjoyed a good meal and time with family and friends and an occasional sip of Crown Royal along the way. One very specific impact he had on his family was that he inspired so many of us to go and pursue the career of education. I've currently lost count. However, it must be getting close to 20 siblings, sons, daughters-in-law, cousins that work in education today. Thanks, Dad. Over the last week, I've had the honor to receive many messages from people that have known him, with one resounding, repeated message. Your father was the kindest, most accepting person they had known, and that he was a pillar of our Ukrainian community for decades. I wish to thank you on behalf of my family for these words. As, my, as his legacy or fame will not be measured in fortunes, monuments, or accolades he collected in his life, but for every person he helped, accepted, elevated, cared for, and loved. We are his trophies, his successes, his legacy. On behalf of my dear mother, my brothers Andre and Alex, our families, our wives, grandchildren, I want to thank you, Dad, for being the greatest teacher in our lives. To lead with the heart, to educate, to elevate, and build God's kingdom through his ultimate creation of humanity. On this day of your birthday, we commemorate my father's life from ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Adam will be of the earth again. We love you, Dad. Vichnaya Pangan.